and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a JavaScript animation from scratch. So I realize this is kind of not really important because we have so many JavaScript frameworks to refer to now, but it is good to know how to do it. So I'm just going to do this and really create this from scratch. So I'm going to create a folder called JS animation and I will open that up in my text editor. I'll create a new file and I will call this index.html and I'll go ahead and open that up in the background in Firefox. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is just begin our HTML and I'll just call this JS animation and uh, get rid of this because we don't need any of this structure for this video. And uh, what I'm going to do is create a, another file, and I'm going to call this functions.js for obviously, and include that on my index.html at the bottom, right before the the body tag or the ending body tag. And I'll also create my JavaScript. So this should be everything that we need to do in this video. And the first thing I want to do right now is actually create a div. And I'm going to give this an ID of box, and I'm going to style it with CSS. And I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixels, a height of 200 pixels, and a background color of red. OK, so now if we come back and reload on our page, you can see we have this box. And what I want to do is add an event handler. So I'm going to make sure, I'm going to look for whenever somebody clicks on this box div, that we can do something. So I'm going to go ahead back into my JavaScript. I'm going to create this function called add event. We'll pass an object through this, the event name, the function, and a capture. Which, yeah, I'll do it, but I don't really ever use it. Okay. Um, so we'll, first of all, this, I'm not going to explain this add event function. If you want to know more about that, you can go to nettoots.com and look for Jeffrey Way's video tutorials on JavaScript from scratch. And I think in the fourth episode, fourth or fifth, he actually talks about adding event listeners and to objects. So I'm just going to put out my code quickly so I can um, continue on with the more important part of this video. Okay, so what I'm going to do to see if this works is um, create a variable called box and make that equal to document dot get element by ID of box, and then I'll add the add event to our box. We're looking for a click. And when you click, we'll create a function. And we'll say alert. So this should give us an alert, and you can see it, and it also should work with Internet Explorer. So now that we've done that, we're really ready to go and start animating this. So the idea that I put out for this video to show you a basic animation was to actually make my box move to the right, to maybe in one second, and however many pixels I want. So the way I'm going to do that is um, just create a function. We'll call this move div, and we'll add an object to this, the distance that we want to move it, and a speed. So the first thing I want to do is make sure with this function, I want to make sure that speed and distance are supplied. If they're not, we'll give them a default value. So we'll say if distance Then we'll set the distance equal to maybe 250 pixels. 
And if they don't supply a speed, then we'll set speed equal to like 500 milliseconds. And I'm just going to specify that. Okay, so that's everything that we really need done here. The next thing that we need to do is I'm going to use margin left to actually move this box. So I need to make sure margin left is supplied. So the way we can do that is we can say if object.style.marginLeft does not exist, then we'll set object margin left equal to zero. And we'll append the pixels to this. This way JavaScript, well, um, web browsers can actually tell that this is zero pixels. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is add this move div function and pass my box to do this. And I'm going to say I want to move it just for now, like 250 pixels in one second. Okay, get it. There you go. So now if I click on this, nothing happens. But visually, but I can come and look, and you can see that we added this margin left to it. So that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, so now we're really going to only work in this function from now on. And I'm going to just create the animation, and then we're going to fix it. Actually, I don't know. I think what I'll do is just show you how to create the animation and then try to explain it. So I'm going to create a variable called timer, and that's going to be equal to null. And basically what we're going to do with that timer variable is we'll say timer equals a set interval. And we'll create a function. And we'll say we want to run this function every 5 milliseconds. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to run this function that I've supplied here every 5 milliseconds. Okay, so that actually starts, we can do things inside of that. We can say, well, I want to move my object which in this case is that box, I want to move that object like plus five pixels every five milliseconds. And if you did that over a long enough period of time, you'd actually see it start to move to the right. And it would do very quickly because it's running every five milliseconds. But what we also need to do is because we're working with this speed, we need to make sure that the animation doesn't last too long. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called start time make that equal to a new date dot get time okay so basically we're just getting a start time and this creates a really weird long number I'm gonna comment this out so I don't accidentally crash my browser but I'm just gonna log this start time so you can actually see what it looks like so when I click on this you see this this long number so that's getting the current time somehow I don't know how oh well, I guess that's 1.26 p.m. in the sec milliseconds and a lot of seconds added to that. So what we can do with that is we can sub get the elapsed time with this set interval. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a variable called elapsed down here. And make that equal to null. And then inside of the set interval function, when we are looping through this, we want to constantly update that elapsed variable. So here we'll say elapsed equals, and here we'll do the new date again, dot get time. So we're actually getting the current time, and we'll subtract the start time from this. So now if I log this, the elapsed time, and I click on it, you can see that it just animates automatically, or it's not animating, but it just keeps logging this number over and over again, and it just keeps updating it, and then we just get a longer t number. Okay, so this ran over the course of about 500 milliseconds because it's running. Um, I don't know how to explain this if you don't understand it. Basically, we're getting the number and we're subtracting the other number from it so we can get the amount of time. But we we want to do with this is we want to make sure that the elapsed time is less than our speed, which would be better off as a duration, but we'll just use speed, speed for now. So we'll say if elapsed time is less than our speed, then we want to do the animation. And then we'll also have an else, and then we'll say stop the animation. 
actually, I don't think that's what it's for. Okay, so when we stop the animation, what we want to do is we want to stop the set interval function because there's really no reason to have it running after the animation has completed. Um, because if you do too many animations and you just have this looping over and over again, two or three of these, then you're going to crash the browser eventually or use a lot of CPU. So what we'll do is we'll say clear interval timer. So that actually stops the timer. And uh, now if I reload and I click on this, actually, I never logged anything. Okay. Why we'll do this, let me just put it outside so you can actually watch this. Okay, so if I reload and I click on this, you can see it goes all the way to 1004. So it actually went over this time because it went, I wanted it to run in one second, and you can see that it went over the amount of time. That's not a big deal. I mean, it's close enough. I mean, because you're really not going to see that. Um, I mean, 0 0.04 milliseconds, or a millisecond, I guess. Actually, I'm kind of confused myself. I probably should stop talking. Um, so what we're going to do is, while the animation is supposed to run, what we'll do is we'll create a delta variable. So I'm just going to put this up here, and I'll call it D for short. And the delta is basically going to get the amount of change that needs to occur um, for this animation to work. So basically what we're going to do is we'll say d equals the elapsed time divided by the speed times the distance that we need to move the object. So now if I just log that for you so you can kind of see what it's doing. Click on this and you can see that it's moving. And it's just getting the amount of time that we want the animation to last multiplying by the distance that we need to move it. So we can actually get an accurate amount of pixels to move the object to last the correct time. Does that make sense? I mean, like, we need the animation to run in one second, so we also need to make sure that the object moves fast enough to get, or slow enough, to move all the way, to move that distance in one second. Um, so if I said, like, I want to move this 50 pixels, you'll see this number takes a lot longer to go through. Okay, approximately. Okay, so what we can do now is we'll actually set the object's margin left. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, I can copy this whole thing and put it here. And then just change this zero with the, the distance or the delta. So now if I reload and I click on this, you can see it moves. So it moved really, it's really a smooth animation. And if I change the speed that I want this to run, I'm not going to count it. You can if you like to. So three, two, one. I click, and you can see that it's actually moving the object at the correct speed, so it actually lasts over the five seconds. Well, here's the problem that we're facing now. If I actually look at this object, you can see it only got to 249.5 pixels. So it was really close, but it could mess with your design. I mean, it, somehow, I don't. it would be quite difficult, but it's not, if you watch this animation over and over again, you'll notice that it's never, I really should make this a bit faster. You'll notice that it's not perfect every time. You can see that it's, it will not get to 250 most of the time. So to fix that problem, we need to say when the animation is complete, so when we're done with the animation, what we'll do is we'll set the object's style again to the distance total, the, the total distance that we want to move it. So now when I click on this, and when it finishes, you can see that it gets to the very end. It actually gets to the, the, the end point that we wanted. So that is the, the easy way of creating a, an a animation with JavaScript from scratch. So I, I want to do another one to actually kind of show you again. Um, I think if I show you another one, it would be opacity. Because opacity, you really need a bit more than just the distance that you want to move it. I mean, realistically, this is quite difficult to work with. Um, because right now, we're only setting it to move 
margin left, okay? If you wanted to do this move left and then, or right then left, that would be a bit more difficult to do um, because what I would do, I'm just gonna tell you this, I'm not actually gonna do this in the video, um, but I'm gonna take this distance and when we have this, once we get this margin left, what I would do is I would say if the distance, I just wanted to do this below where we're setting all the variables, so we could have a direction equals right. So by default, we move it to the right. And then we could say if the distance that we want to move it is less than the object style dot margin left dot replace pixels with blank. So it's just a number. So we actually can check this. Then we would say direction equals left. Okay, so now we can actually tell, are we going left or right? And then down here in the animation, I would actually do if um, the direction equals right, then do this animation. Oh, I'm kind of doing that. Um, and then what we need to do is somehow reverse this number. So let's try that. I want to try this. So the margin left equals 500 pixels. Okay, so that moves it over here. And let's just see what happens when I click on it now. It didn't say replace. Okay. You can see now, it, when I do this, you can see it's moving from the left to the right. So let's try saying D minus, and here we need to get for D equals. We need to get the, the current distance. So let's come down here. Let's say current distance equals, and I need this number. Okay, and then we'll say or current distance, I'm sorry, minus D. Okay, so now when I click on this, you can see that it moves to the right, negative 250 pixels. Let's take a look at and see where it's sitting at 250. So it's actually moving to the left. And then if I did, if I set this down to just maybe 50 pixels, then now you can see it's jumping. So we need to fix that jump. Let's just try adding this and see what happens. And <laughs> might be a bad thing. Moved it backwards. Yeah, that made it jump like crazy. Yeah, so that's the problem that I'm seeing now is I'm not sure how to make it so it just sits there. It actually jumps, and you can kind of see that. Um, but if, I, if you really want to see it, I can change that number a bit higher. Okay, so I don't know how to fix that problem, but yeah, that's something that you can do on your own that'll be a lot of fun. So I don't really have a way of supplying this code. I'm very sorry, because I don't really have a good website to put code on to. So um, you'll just have to I don't know what I'll do. I'll figure something out, and I'll have it in the, the description of the YouTube video. Thanks for watching this video, and goodbye.